This is probably going to get YouTube flagged, but that's fine. Hopefully it doesn't get blocked because this is a very beautiful song. So it looks like a, actually a bunch of people helped make this game. Maybe. These could just be testers or something too. It doesn't really say what they did. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Having uh, sleep problems is uh, no fun. Okay, I need to know if this game is based on a real life event because that was a mind trip. That was it. What? Oh, I'm so confused on some parts. Confused about the stop putting lampposts in my game. That was very weird. And then the following part where we were going through the ending bit and he actually made mention. He's like, I know I said I would be here. And that was a line that I used in the phone booth spot. Make, essentially making a reference to... I was trapped in a prison. And he was future me trying to help me get out of that prison. By saying he would be there and then he had to leave. Or something like that. I don't know. This game is... Wild. What was it? I need to know if that's real. I'm going to have to look that up. But that was fun. Holy cow. Yeah, see, and what I really liked about that game, too, is it sheds light on the fact of this whole... Uh, it's kind of, I guess, what Coda, whether they're a real person or not, um, was trying to make a point of. is like games don't necessarily have to always follow a formula. Like, you got to go to a point A to point B, or you need to accomplish something. You know, like, um, like the games we've been playing now it's like the, you know, they're loopable like enter the gungeon you just keep going for as long as you want there's no destination in sight there's no hard end well enter the gungeon i think there actually is a hard end uh, but there are games it's like yep, just just go forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and then you have a game that's far from noise where it's literally just dialogue the entire time you do nothing other than dialogue and i think those games are very fun they have a very special place in my heart because they do something different and they I don't know how to phrase it they do something different they don't follow a norm they take their own chance there and they go off on their own little path and I think that's really cool um you know in time where we're in a time where it there's the game community is just flooded by you know first person shooter games and not to say that they're not fun they're not or they're bad or anything or they're not unique in any way because there's many of them are very different but when you have something like this that's completely wild off in its own little area th this game would probably have never gotten a support from like a big AAA publisher you know they'd be like nope it needs to follow a set pattern that we know is going to sell kind of thing and that's why i really have a soft spot for indie games too is because they take those chances and i it sucks when some of them die or never make it to through development or they flop. It's it's very sad, but it's also those gems that you can get from the indie publishers like Hollow Knight. That's a fantastic game. Uh, I've played a bunch of indie games. I can't think of any um, right now, which is very unfortunate on the channel. Um, but and they're just like these people took a chance. They had an idea. They went for it. And it was awesome. Like Bastion, Transistor, those were great. I don't, I don't think those are big publishers. I'm pretty sure they're indie. Um, Darkest Dungeon, I believe, was an indie as well. Now it's huge because um, its fan base has grown so much and it was so cool. Yeah, indie games are fantastic, man. I think that's generally what I look for when uh, I'm looking into finding something new. Because when you get something from... Like, this is going to be some hate word, but whatever. Um, like an EA. When they get behind a publish, or I'm like, oh, we're going to be your publisher, and they get behind something, totally ruins it for me. And uh, I've given them so many chances, like, games come out, and like, hey, you know what? 
This looks really fun. I'm going to try it. I'm going to give him one more chance. I'm one more chance just to don't screw it up. Yay. Don't screw it up. And I've been screwed over one too many times that I can be super stoked about a game. But as soon as I see EA's name on it, I'm like, well, no longer interested in that game, which is a bummer because there's some of them that looked really cool. Um, just ah, don't ruin the game, man. And unfortunately, some of these games require that funding, so they have to bend the knee to these people. They're like, oh, well, we're paying the bills, so you need to do this now. Put microtransactions in your game kind of crap. Uh, what happened that Battlefront 2 or something? So much flack. And I one thing that I did like about that came out of that is the gaming community came together and said, screw that. That's messed up. Screw you guys. That is not acceptable. This is not what we wanted. And they got so much flack from that all over the social media that it sent a message to many of the other publishers and developers to be like, don't do this crap because you know what? You're going to refund our money at that point. And fortunately it came out, came to light before these people got the game. So they could be like, no, give me a refund before I even play it kind of stuff. But was it undertale an indie game too? I believe that one is. I've never played that one though. Um, but I don't remember. I'm just going on tangent. Hey, Kuz, what's going on? Yeah. Heat signatures is on my list. I just don't own it yet, but dang, this game was in, that was a, that was a field trip there. That went completely off in left field. I did not expect that kind of game. I thought it was just kind of a story game, like, um, apart from noise. I know I keep referencing that. I mean, that was kind of a field trip too, because it touched on life and death and philosophy and stuff. But, um, I, I figured it was just going to be like a story time kind of game. And it was actually kind of heavy. Uh, let's exit this. There we go. How long? Played that for two hours. All right. So that was uh, the beginner's guide. That was actually a lot of fun. Uh, it is nine o'clock. Normally we have two hours left of stream. I'm also feeling kind of sleepy. I don't know if I want to end it here or try to go on more. We'd also have to find some other game to, uh, to play. Uh, uh, good friend Yuri, a regular of the channel, graciously gifted us another game uh, called Speedrunners. I didn't install that yet. Uh, that looks interesting. I'm going to have to give that a shot at some point. What makes me sad is that there are people who refuse to call those games. I knew a person who was determined to call only things that take skill games like competitive. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, they refuse to call them games. I, I misread what you were saying. Yeah. Um, I understand that. And I could see some of their argument, too. It's like, well, it's not a game. You're just kind of sitting there pushing one button. How is that a game? I'm like, OK, well, did you ever play? Um, what's that one button with the memory game? You know, there's. Some people think fidget spinners are games, you know, it's kind of the argument of like people say uh, NASCAR is a sport. I don't consider NASCAR a sport. Um, it's great feats of engineering and stuff. And yeah, those people have to make split second decisions and stuff. but. I consider sports something that is, um, this is going to sound ignorant too, uh, physically taxing, which I know going, pulling those G's and staying in that car for 4 million laps and stuff like that is physically taxing, but you're not using your body, uh, to what I consider a sport, but you know what? There's arguments against that too. Um, so I can accept that. And when people say that like that isn't a game or far from noise, wasn't in a game or, any of that kind of stuff, I can understand their points. Um, however, it's we all have our own little opinions when it comes to that, you know? Uh, yeah, and stuff... Games don't need to be competitive, man. Like, I never understood that. Like, um... I like co-op games. Like, yeah, well, you're competing against your friends even though you're in co-op, or you're competing against other people when you're in co-op. No, not necessarily. Sometimes you're competing against the game itself. Um... Those I actually really enjoy. Games where you play as a team against the game. And I'm not talking video games here because that's a lot of games. Especially dungeon crawlers. You go in as a group and you take out a bunch of the people. You know, are together. I'm talking like a board game. Like uh, Arkham Asylum. That's a very fun game. You play as a team and the game tries to kill you and your friends. 
but I'm kind of rambling now. That was a lot of fun. Um, there's, oh crap, that is something I forgot to do. There is a Twitter poll open, or up, rather, about the next game that we're going to play. Um, let me copy this. Copy. And we need to add this. Oh, can't spell. I need to uh, add this to my timers because we have a new poll up on what to vote for the next game to play, and that'll be starting on Monday. I just kind of did a grab bag of games that could be interesting. Um, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, uh, Dishwasher Vampire Smile, uh, Darkest Dungeon, the new DLC, and XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. So, that should be interesting. Um, oh my gosh. Someone I follow on Twitter has a big pebble. I love him. I love it. Alright, I'm going to have to message them because they're another streamer I follow and it looks adorable. So I will have to check them out. Find out their names and give remote pupper pets. But actually, you know what? I'm kind of in IRL mode. So there we go. We can have a full cam up. Big Stardew Valley update adds co-op multiplayer. Really? I don't own that game either. I've gotten some flack on I've actually had a lot of people ask if I've played that before. Uh, it looks interesting. Um, I might get bored of it, though. I don't know. I might look more into it. I've heard it's a fantastic game. I'm making sure I'm not missing any chat here. We're good. Hey, doggos. Jada. Hi, come here. Come say hello to the people. Come here. Have you heard of Harvest Moon? Um, that was the game before Stardew Valley, wasn't it? Come here, doggies! Or the game that I guess... Stardew Valley was based off of something like that. Come here, hop up. Come here, come say hello to the people. You started the stream up here. There you go. This is a Jada. Are you ready for bedtimes? You gotta go potty. Yes, you gotta go potty. Oh, hello. Oh, goodness. Started. Yeah. Oh, don't lick me in my mouth. That's gross. <laughs> yeah, not related, but it's based off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the I can't believe I remember that. I think I read that three months ago on a just random note someone said. But I heard that one's really good too. Nah, <laughs> this is a pupper. Yes. Oh no. There's a. There you go. I had to switch to that. I forgot our little uh, bird friend responds to that. I might have to put him in the full cam. So he can be a part of this, make him, make him bigger or something. But yeah, we might call it an early night tonight, guys. Sorry, but I uh, have been sleeping as well. Mickey, sounds like you're in the same kind of boat. Um, but uh, we'll be picking up a new game starting Monday. Uh, depending on what poll wins here. Are you okay? Mama's just, Mama's is uh, camera shy, apparently. Jada doesn't care. Jada gets on camera. Oh, here. Oh, I'm not going to hear me so much, but this is a Jada face. The pupper mleps? Yeah, that would be Mama's over there chomping on a toy. That's what she loves. She loves the toys. And Jada knows it's potty time, which means it's dinner time. You're going to knock over things. Kind of make sure she's going to not knock it over, but... Thank you guys so much for tuning in with me. I hope you had fun. I very much enjoyed it. If you liked it, remember to like, subscribe, comment. It helps me out a lot. Ooh. Let's me know what you're liking, what you're not liking. But uh, more importantly, remember to spay and your pets. Whoops. Adopt, don't shop. Donate to a risk if you can afford it. Or open up your house up to the possibility of fostering. That is a very rewarding experience and helps those animals and rescues out that are very much in need. Anyway, I'm Basic. This is Jaded. That's Mamas. Thank you for tuning in with us. And uh, I will catch you next time. See ya.